Do you have a dirty little secret? Welcome to the club. And you're all invited. The first rule of the Dirty Little Secrets Club is tell everyone about the Dirty Little Secrets Club. We're handing out memberships free of charge. Step up to the VIP line and let Dana and Brimstone take you on a weekly ride of secrets and debauchery. Now buckle up, Buttercup, because things are about to get heated on the Dirty Little Secrets Club. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Dirty Little Secrets Club. We're your hosts. And Dana Pereira. And this is Brimstone, and it's going to be an awesome episode. Why, Dana? Why is it going to be so awesome? Oh, my gosh. There are so many options here. <laughs> you look you look like a deer in headlights right now. <laughs> I'm a Dana in headlights. <laughs> a Dana in headlights. Dana in headlights. It's going to be awesome because we're here and we're talking to everybody. So they get, to, they get more of us. That's why it's awesome. You know what else is awesome? What? I am almost completely foster dog free. <gasps> wow. Really? I mean, I keep seeing them getting like picked up. Adopted, that... adopted, adopted. So uh, I had a foster. Her name was Kuma. She was the one that had the four puppies. All mm -hmm. of her puppies were adopted, but she wasn't. She found herself the best home ever. And Ooh. then I have another puppy. His name is Pluck. He's about to get adopted. And then Lars and Lexi, I'm going on a cross-country RV trip with Lars and Lexi to take them to Pittsburgh, where my mom will be foster slash adopting. We'll see what happens there. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I have no more foster dogs. Now, yeah, for like five minutes. <laughs> no, no, I'm taking a break. I'm taking oh. a well-deserved break. I'm still going to be oh. working with the rescue. Um, okay. But... I'm going to Aruba in September and I'm like, oh. I shouldn't, I'm just going to wait until after Aruba. I'll give myself a few months off. And then after Aruba, I'll welcome more foster dogs. And then are you going to name them Jamaica? Oh, I want to take you to Bermuda, <laughs> Bermuda Bahama. Bahama. <laughs> Come on, pretty mama. <laughs> Key Largo, Montego. Baby, why don't we go to the Kokomo? I, why why was I not invited to this, uh, this Aruba trip? I'm well, because insulted. it's to spread my stepdad's ashes with my family. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't be going on that one. All right, fair enough. You got me there, day. Okay, you got me there. It's okay. All right. But I'm I gonna... do like your idea for the like the next litter of puppies that comes through my house. I'm gonna call the mom pretty mama, and then I'm gonna name all of the babies like Bahama, Kokomo, Aruba, Jamaica. <laughs> and you always be in the islands, man. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be always in the island, you know. You'd be re relaxing. Uh, you know? One happy so. island, Aruba. Woo, love it. <laughs> it's serving you up there. There you go. And, and and you know, all the dogs, when they look on you, putting their hot breath on you, be just like staying in, you know, the sun out there. Just like the hot sun in Aruba. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Except oh, yeah, it's yeah, hot, yeah. stanky breath. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what do you call it? Talking about hot, stinky breath. Um, Justin Timberlake was arrested and he refused to to breathe into the breathalyzer. Yes, he um, did. He was arrested on a DWI. I'm sure most of you have probably already heard about it yet. It was here oh. in my neck of the woods on Long Island. Yeah. Uh, Sag Harbor. Sag Harbor, like the road he's on. Um, you know, I've been there a bazillion times. Um, absolutely love that area. And um uh, you know, watching the video, the video didn't look too bad. Um, no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't... I think that was just like a, like security footage or, you know, whatever, surveillance footage, whatever it was. But I don't think that they were saying in the video that he was driving crazy. What they said was that he blew a stop sign. Um, well, he and then he was sign and then was driving erratically, they said, like in and out. Oh. of. But I mean, it didn't look like the video it looked fine. View. <laughs> yeah. The video looked fine. And again, look, I, you know, I'm not, I'm really not trying to, I'm not trying to defend somebody who did something wrong because everybody who knows me knows how I feel about people who drive intoxicated. Um, very, very much against that. Mm -hmm. And especially people in the public eye, you know, I feel that we have a specific, um, a specific uh, persona that we have to put out there and we have a responsibility to make sure that people understand that you know you shouldn't be out there drinking and driving you shouldn't be doing this you shouldn't be doing that um even if people don't want to listen like they they've come back at um i don't know if you saw you know chef ramsey had had that accident 
on the yeah. motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And he had his whole, like, remember when my arm was like all purple? The whole, his whole side yeah. Yeah, is, is all purple now. And he went on, on and said, hey, I was in this accident. And, you know, thank God I was wearing a helmet. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be here right now. I would be dead. And I just want to make sure to let all of you know to wear a, a helmet, you know, uh, whether you're on a motorcycle or bicycle. He was trying to put good, good right, juju yeah. out there. And the internet came for him like a-holes. Really? You know what I'm saying? For yeah. yeah. Who, how dare you tell me what to do and what not to do? Oh, shut how up. How, you know, like, it's, you know, why? Why be like that? So, again, you know, I, I still feel that he did the right thing. And with Justin Timberlake being that squeaky clean persona for most of his career, um, you know what I mean? I think that this was, I guess, you know, he he... he Listen, he might have, we don't know how many other times he got pulled over prior to this and they knew who he was and then let him go. Um, you know, because th this person th didn't know who he was. And the thing is, I'm not even coming for JT in this scenario because I don't have enough facts of what right. happened. He right. said that he had one martini and then mm -hmm. he refused a breathalyzer. Now, right. my husband will tell you refuse the breathalyzer, ask for a blood test every single time. So that I don't, I'm not even hating on him for not. I'm sure his lawyers probably told him if you ever get pulled over, refuse the breathalyzer. Mm -hmm. So I'm not hating on him for that. The thing that I think is hilarious is the the cop that arrested him was so young that he didn't know who he was. Didn't <laughs> he didn't he recognize was. his name, Unreal. nothing. And JT is all, oh, this is going to fuck up the world tour or something like that. And yeah. the guy was like, no, the tour, the tour. He's oh, like, what oh. tour? Yeah, what tour? The world he says tour. The world tour. It cracks Unreal. me up that that Unreal. happened. And the thing is, it's like you know, I feel, I feel like, okay, well, the guy could have let him go, but if he was really drunk, and he, re if he was really drunk, right, um, you know, then then he should be locked held up, held accountable. Yeah, he should be held accountable. Um, so I don't know. You know what I mean? Like here, like if it was for something stupid, you know, let the guy go. You know, like um, I know that that Redis Norman was out in while well, he was filming, and apparently in uh, in Paris you have to have a um, um, a helmet and you have to wear gloves when riding a motorcycle. So oh, he had fancy. the helmet. <laughs> Yeah, he had the helmet, but he apparently forgot his gloves. And no. uh, so he turned around, he went back to go get the gloves, and they pulled him over, and they were like, you know, with guns and all that stuff. Apparently, they're real harsh with, with stuff there. I don't know. Interesting. Um, yeah, and what do you call it? And, uh, you know, he he pulled his helmet off, and they're like, take off the helmet, and he pulled his helmet off. They're like, oh, it's Daryl Dixon, Daryl Dixon. And they let him go. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's something, like, so small. You know what I mean? That's so small. Yeah, Drunk Daryl. Driving, driving intoxicated is a oh. different scenario there. And if he was intoxicated, then yes, he should be held accountable. Absolutely. Yeah. If he, like he said, had one martini and he actually was not intoxicated, um, then I think that more information is going to come out. We will hear about what happens whenever this whole thing ends up in court and his attorney is apparently vigorously looking forward to defending him. So, oh, I, I mean, I'm not like, sure he like is. he jerks off vigorously. He's <laughs> looking forward to defending him. <laughs> well, um, so what do you call it? Uh, it what was crazy is like right after that. First of all, the memes have been ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, Britney Spears, um, you know, her, she reacted to it by posting a picture of a cocktail. Well, I'm um, glad it was a cocktail and not a set of knives because whew, shit was getting dangerous there for a minute. <laughs> really? Did I miss something? Oh my gosh, you don't remember when she was dancing with knives and the whole internet exploded? No, I didn't. I didn't oh. see that one. Okay. Just I, Google listen, Britney I Spears and attention. knives. It is it's something to behold. I love Britney, but at the end of the day, she is just too goddamn whacked out. I almost wanted because I like I want nothing from the girl. I I almost wanted to go and volunteer myself to to freaking bodyguard for her just simply because so somebody doesn't take advantage of the damn thing. That's how whacked out she is and I'm like I feel I feel bad for her. There you are know? some mental health things absolutely. I think the whole world can see that when it comes to Britney Spears that it is um I mean it's it's sad. It's sad to see there are definite mental health things going on. 
um what those occurred from who knows but you know what it's from it's from everything that this poor girl's gone through i have nothing but you know i i feel i feel bad for her you know what i mean yeah and that's awful to have to say i feel bad for her and what she's had to go through and and as much as she's been taken advantage of but she did clap back at timberlake by doing that um and, and i'm assuming it was stemming from uh when he had come at her saying you know like Oh, you know, you shouldn't be drinking. You're in the public eye, and there's so many people that are that watch you, and you know they look up to you. And well, mm-hmm. here, whoop, there it is, type of mm-hmm. thing. Uh, and then one of our own Long Island, uh, Long Island's own uh, resident drunkard, um, oh, <laughs> Billy, jo- Billy resident Joel. <laughs> but uh, listen, I have respect for Billy Joel, um, but he is very well known to be a- an alcoholic and have an issue with that. So what do you call it? Now, again, I don't know how it is in recent years because he's really kind of kept himself out of the news until recently. But he came back and he said how, you know, hey, look, don't judge. Don't judge. You don't know what's going on. And until all the details are there, you can't you can't judge what what's going on. And you can't judge what people are going through. Okay. Again, coming from him. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, well, I, mean, oh. I feel like that is uh, uh, something that people should pay heed to because you shouldn't yes. be judging right the fuck away. There's like somebody posted something online the other day that was like um, a woman gets arrested for going to work and letting her 14 year old um, babysit. Mm. And some they just wrote thoughts. And I wrote. I'd like the whole story rather than a headline to go off of because you want people to make these like instant judgment calls. Mm. I don't know what the fuck this girl was doing. I don't know what is up with her 14 year old daughter. You have given us no information except for a headline. And then everybody Mm. just wants to go off on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how about the whole story or shut the fuck up? Exactly. And, you know, and, and I'm always I always like to because I've been the other party to it. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I am always like, well, let's give the benefit of the doubt. Let's see where it goes. Let's hear all the information before I make a judgment call. And even if you see with this, you know, I, I'm saying if he did this, this is very bad and this is wrong. Mm-hmm. But I'm not I'm not saying he did it and or or, um, you know, that that, you know, he's a piece of garbage for doing it. I haven't I haven't made any judgment on it. Right. Yeah. Just stating what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um. So Billy Joel, speaking to him. Uh. Well, again, we'll we'll figure out what happens with with uh J T. But in time, um, in due in time, time, my friend. Billy in Joel, <laughs> in good time. Uh. <laughs> Billy Joel has just released his first new music video, literally in decades. Uh, it's called "Turn the Lights Back On." So it's funny that he jumped out and spoke about Justin Timberlake. Um. Maybe that's why he did it. Maybe, maybe there's so and the the funny thing is, is that there was a whole story about this where um there was a kid who wanted to meet Billy Joel. He had an idea or something and through a friend of a friend, which turned out to be a doctor um who knew Billy Joel, was able to arrange a meeting between Billy Joel and this kid for like lunch. Right. And Billy Joel wound up taking the meeting. Lucky kid. I don't wish know I had a friend of a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know his daughter. I mean, I don't know Billy, but I know his daughter. Uh, what do you call it? So um, what do you call it? The the whole thing with that is that um, the kid could tell that he was like not planning on staying long. He ordered like, you know, uh, oysters on the half shell and like something to go. And a glass <laughs> of water. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And they wound up doing like uh, having like a two and a half hour, you know, discussion. And then they turned out to become friends. And this kid convinced him to write a new song and uh, he helped to put it out. So what do you call it? It's called Turn the Lights Back On. And um, it features like AI. They basically used the technology to showcase like uh, performances throughout the ages of Billy Joel's life. So AI has become such a crazy thing so it could be really really positive Mm -hmm. or it could be used in a not so positive way which i think you want to talk about or it could be used by a baltimore teacher to get his principal fired (laughs) so this person a, a teacher in baltimore i believe he decided that he was going to use ai to impersonate his principal's voice saying racist comments, and then he releases it 
to make it appear that this person was racist. What? What wow. the fuck? Now, this is what scares me, because if you can use AI for petty little simple things by a regular person to impersonate another person, regular person's voice that means that ai could fuck all of us right in the booty hole it could make our lives miserable so pretty much yeah luckily the police investigated this they found that this recording was inauthentic and they actually ended up firing the teacher once they found out thank goodness because they should fire his ass for doing something so fucking shady what's crazy is is the fact that um, what do you call it? That somebody can get away with this and anybody could do it. But this, the, 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 the a bigger picture of this is what do you call it? That, um, anybody who actually did do something like that could be like, I didn't do it. And uh -huh. now there is an actual possible out for them because they could claim that somebody did some kind of AI generated thing. So, you know, what, well, what's they, the truth, what's do, not the truth? They are able to prove at this point, as far as I know, whether or not it's authentic or inauthentic. However, think of every jaded person on the internet that reads a headline and jumps to a conclusion. Oh, now, yeah. let's take AI and let's auto-generate uh, my ex-boyfriend's voice saying something either racist or, you know, as a pedophile or whatever it is that you want to get revenge on somebody for and just release that without any other context. Like that could be super dangerous for the general public, especially right. with us petty ass bitches. Humans are petty as fuck. Well, I mean, and again, and it's not you're not like talking about like Taylor Swift or Justin Timberlake or Donald Trump. You know what I mean? You're talking about what do you call it? Regular every everyday Joes. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Where it you know this it could do even more irreparable harm. Um, yeah. I see it in a bunch of different directions. I mean, I, and again, you know me and my relationship with AI. I think that it could be used when used responsibly. You know, it can be used in in tremendous ways to you know to really push forward amazing work and projects and so forth. However, when doing the the devil's deeds, um, mm, not so much. There you know? super needs to be regulations put on AI. And at this point, there are no regulations, which is going to be, in my opinion, very, very, very dangerous. And I, nobody seems, I mean, maybe they're taking it seriously and they're just not talking about it in the general public just yet. Right. But that shit sounds scary to me. I'm ready. I'm like, I, just dig me a hole and like, I don't know, put a case of wine in there, 12, and I'll just live out my life in the hole <laughs> with my wine maybe you throw a dog or two in there th those th that that wine will not last you very long for it really would honest. not it would be you'd 24 be crawling days out of the hole. <laughs> you'd be crawling out of the hole oh excuse, excuse me excuse me excuse may me may i have some more please <laughs> may i have some more please yes um what do you call it yeah i mean not feeling it, not feeling it at all. Um, I, I now regulations. I, you know, I don't think that they can really put regulations on AI. I mean, you know, except for like the the things where if you're um, creating stuff like that, there should be. You no, know, they absolutely could put regulations on it. If you are caught impersonating somebody's voice yes. without permission, you yes. go to big boy jail. Yes. Like they, they absolutely can regulate it. It's a matter yeah. of if and when they regulate it and how many people are going to get hurt before they regulate it. A lot. Mm -hmm. A lot. A lot. Yeah. What do you call it? Um. Anyways, and, and there are a lot of freaking pranksters out there. So a lot many. of people that want to do stupid things and mm -hmm. so forth. But there's um something that had been going on in I don't remember where it was. You had mentioned it to me. I definitely wanted to talk about it. Um, mysterious monoliths appearing. Yeah. So the latest one is in Vegas. Vegas. It's in in Nevada. Yes. And so it's funny because these things, I don't know if you've heard of them before, but these monoliths have been popping up in different areas of the world. How big is this thing? It looks huge. It it does look pretty big and it's covered in mirrors. So it's really hard to tell that it's there unless you're like right next to it. 
-hmm. because it kind of reflects everything else out and it blends in and you can't fucking especially if you're out in the middle of the fucking desert you know like right. it's just gonna reflect sand and sky and that's it um but yeah they've been popping up all over the place and this particular one made me laugh because the i guess i think it was the police were like oh yeah this new monolith and uh residents are like if you've ever hiked that trail in the last few years you would know that it's been there for the last few years <laughs> yeah and it's it's about 10 feet it says 10 feet tall but here's the question i mean like what exactly like what is it used for what is it I don't know. So some people think that it's aliens. Some people think that it's like a Banksy, like artwork, you know? Um, I don't know what it is exactly, but how did it get there? <laughs> well, has anybody like taken the like uh taken a rock to it and broke it just to see what's going on inside or any of that? Like I'm sure that there was one time that I remember that it went up and then like the next day it was back down or something like that. It's so weird. Yeah. I mean, really weird. I think it's man-made, but aliens are still among us. I don't know. Well, look, I mean, everybody is saying that in general, I mean, now it's not even a, a secret that there have been aliens and, and UFOs. You know what I mean? Like even the government is even saying, well, yeah, you know, UFOs are a thing. You know what I mean? And that uh -huh. could, be, could be alien life. Um, okay. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if aliens are among us. I don't know uh, if this is artwork. I do think it's fucking cool, though, and I would like to see one. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Put yeah. it on the I list. Mean, I would love to, to show up to it. one. I'd be tempted to break it and be like, what's in there? What's going yes. on? What's what's going on in here? Let's just break it and find out what's inside. And see, that is where you and I would differ significantly because I'm like, just let it go. It's pretty. Just let it go. You could break no. it and poisonous gas could come out. I don't know. I don't know that I want to break it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. What do you call it? So um, what do you call it? Apparently, you know, speaking about destinations over there to go find your little monoliths, uh -huh. uh, some do. We're taking a road what, trip, everyone. Yeah, we're taking a road trip. Some dude uh, went on his honeymoon without his wife after her sister went into labor during the wedding. <laughs> his his line was, was I supposed to sit at home? <laughs> so this one, okay, I actually really love this one because I think that everybody from just that would be like, fuck that dude. But, but... Mm -hmm. Um, the story, butt. the story it's goes on. A lot, kind. It's not. He does like big butts. <laughs> I mine was why. Mine was a medium butt. Medium it wasn't a, a medium, yeah. It wasn't medium. a big butt. It was a medium a tiny, butt. Just a cute, a cute little hiney. <laughs> just a little butt. So, the wife they get married, and her sister goes into preterm labor. But I guess the relationship between her sister and her was more of a mother-daughter relationship. And she felt that she needed to stay and support her sister through this. Okay. It's fine. I get that. I totally understand. Support your family member. I, I totally on board with that. However, the honeymoon was two weeks long. So I think mm. that after the baby had been born and the sister was in the hospital and the... um baby had to be in the NICU. Um, I do think that there is a point where you're like, okay, you're taken care of now and there's nothing else I can do for you. I will FaceTime you from Aruba. <laughs> you <know? laughs> because this guy took off work. He just got married. This is also a big life event for him and for her. Right, right. So I don't know. What are your thoughts on this? Because I think the interwebs are split on this one. Um, if you couldn't sell, I mean, if you couldn't get insurance money back for it, uh -huh. I would have tried to give away or or uh, try to sell the honeymoon. Um, you know, so this way you'd be able to kind of recoup and go. You know what I mean? And go back and yeah, but and you try. have you have to do that within like a certain amount of hours because you're going on your honeymoon. Like it's it's go time so then you have to find somebody that's going to purchase the honeymoon from you in one day's notice to go to wherever destination you have decided yeah i listen i would have been like first of all um i would have been like all right well you're either coming or i'm going without you and that would have that would have made you know at least danielle be like okay 
You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, like at the end of the day, like, all right, well, no, you need, you need, you need, we need to pay. We paid for this. It's our fucking, our, our wedding. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, I almost like, I, I stopped myself from cussing. I forgot we're not grindhouse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, sorry Let about that. Let her rip. <laughs> Let her rip. Ah. Um, you know, like I, I, I'd be like, look, I understand, but you know, it's our time. We need to go, and this is, you know, this is a big deal. And you know, for most people, a trip to Aruba, Jamaica, Ooh, I want to take, take you. you. Um, what do you call it? That is not. It's like a once in a lifetime trip for a lot of people. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, if you don't, if you don't take it and you don't take advantage of it. While you have the opportunity, it might never come again. So, you know, look, yes, that was a big event for the the, the sister. Mm -hmm. But the kid is already born. Mm -hmm. You're in the they're in the hospital now. It's time to go on your honeymoon. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's a point where you're like, okay, I have done my duty as your sister. I've come to make sure that you are okay and that the baby is okay. And now that I know that they are okay, now I need to do my duty to my new relationship and my marriage and my husband and show up on this honeymoon that I've been looking forward to since I started planning the wedding, probably. She should have went. Mm -hmm. um, the it fact was two is, weeks is, long. She could have went for one of the weeks. She could have done something. The fact of the matter is, is apparently the kid is was still in the NICU even after he got back. So right, he went because for two if weeks. you're born premature, you're typically yeah. in the NICU until around your due date ish. And she she was mad at him. She's pissed at him for going without her. Well, what are you what, what are you supposed to do? Lose all that money? You know how much money that you know how much money that costs because you yeah. do it. You go there. What's oh, yes. an average trip for two to Aruba? Oh, like, if you had to guess, not even not even first class or anything. What is what is like an average trip to Aruba? I would say seven thousand dollars. Okay, so about seven grand. And so that's that's just being conservative. That's not like you know going all out and doing all the things. I think that's that's about conservative amount. If they spent two grand. I'd say you freaking go. That's a lot of yeah. money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't give it. Listen, here it is. Doesn't matter how much I make, how much you make, you know, what our bank accounts look like. Doesn't matter if we're in good, good shape or not. The fact of the matter is, is that you and I also both grew up from neighborhoods that were not well off and we respect the dollar. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and yeah, we could both be a little bit like this sometimes and spend a little more or whatever. Hey, but treat yourself, day, but that's why we, we came from that. So we know. <laughs> that's it. So the fact of the matter is, it's like, even at five grand, I'd be like, are you out of your goddamn mind? There's no way I'm losing five grand on this. Mm -hmm. you know, now, if she was in the hospital, that's a different that's story a different altogether. Story. You know what I mean? If somebody was dying, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you, you had she was having a baby all right she had the baby and now it's in the NICU there's nothing more you can do you were support you could still be support from 10,000 miles away I and can sit on a beach with an umbrella drink and still support you via FaceTime that's or right. text message or phone call or fucking Instagram you let me know how you want support and I will do it that's right there's no way I'm losing that kind of money not happening yeah, not happening. No. And honestly, and honestly, see, here's the thing is, uh, you know, I know that my wife wouldn't be like, OK, well, I got to stay here. No, she'd be like, all right. Sorry, we got to go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because, because she's the same way. It's like, you know, she doesn't well, it's like also spending a big money. life event. This is your honeymoon. You're only right. supposed to get one honeymoon if you throughout life marry your one time. Um, I've never been on a honeymoon. I never got a honeymoon. I had babies. We didn't have instead. a honeymoon either. Yeah. We had kids. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? But you know, at the end of the day, what do you call it? Even if it wasn't a honeymoon day, if it was just a regular trip that was planned, yeah, and you couldn't move it. There's Still. no flipping way that I'm losing five, seven, ten thousand mm -mm. dollars. Not mm -mm. happening. Listen, Not happening. when we went to Italy last year, if my sister would have called me and told me like, I'm in the hospital, I would have been like, that really sucks. And I am going to think about that while I eat my pasta and drink my wine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Well, I will call listen, you. <laughs> listen, fact is, is he still he married the woman. He could have dodged a bullet like this other dude in Japan. I don't know if you heard about this dude in Japan. Who's the um, dude in Japan? So lay it on me. 
Takashi Miyagawa. He oh, had, <laughs> that was impressive Ta pronunciation. Takashi Miyagawa. Mia, oh, I'm sorry, Miyagawa. There it is. Mm -hmm. uh, was he was apparently allegedly, let's say allegedly, mm -hmm. uh, dating at least at least 35 different women, and then he basically told each one of these women that uh, he had a you know a different day for his quote unquote birthday, and he was collecting birthday presents from these people. Like these women just kept giving him birthday gifts for. <laughs> so apparently, apparently this dude, um, what do you call it? Got caught. I don't know exactly how uh -huh, he got shocker. caught. Um, it, it's, it's, it even says in here, it's unclear how the, uh, the scam was unraveled. Um, uh, but what do you call it? Apparently in 2021, cause this is not recent. Um, the women got together to, to form a victim's association and they reported him to the police for defrauding them out of a hundred thousand Japanese yen. <laughs> oh, what the okay first of all uh, men uh, stop dating so many women at the same fucking time you're going to get caught you aren't as clever as you think you are most of you um and then there's the people that have completely different families that have definitely not been i don't caught, know how the hell still. anybody does that i know i have no I know. idea but 35 different women 30 how do you even keep track of their names? How do you keep track of the birth dates that you gave these women? I have no clue. I have no idea whatsoever. I am just totally... <laughs> I, I, listen, it's hard to handle one woman. How the hell are you going to handle 30-something women? <laughs> like, okay. And it's 35. not just 35 women, because every woman has has at least two personalities. So you're dealing with... At least 60, 70 of them. If, if you're dealing with me, I got 70 on my own, okay? So, <laughs> but no offense, ladies. You know, you know there's no offense. Is he buying these women birthday presents <laughs> also for their birthdays? Or is he just like, hey, my birthday is coming up? Okay, first off, when I start dating somebody and they have a birthday, mm -hmm. it's not like I'm buying them expensive presents or anything. You know what I did for Joe? as like a cute little gift whenever him and I first started dating. We had gone to a restaurant and at this restaurant, he loved the ketchup. It was a spicy ketchup that they made only at this restaurant, like on their own. And then they put it back in a bottle. So I mm -hmm. went to the restaurant and I stole a bottle of their ketchup. <laughs> I stole it. Well, listen. And then was, I surprised him with it. But that was thoughtful because it's something that couldn't be gotten anywhere else. It was something specific. Mm -hmm. So that was a thoughtful thing. I mean, you didn't have to steal it. They probably would have given it to you. They probably However, would have. I'm very oh, sorry, well. Jimmy A is <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so one of one of the comments on this, which is hilarious, says, what about the women that didn't pay single meal for a year because she dated different men every time she ate? These are strategies from both different genders. It should be legal. Wow. Okay. Wow. First of all, I'm waiting for the woman women to unload here. It was not me who said it. <laughs> I just want everybody to know that this was not Brim saying it. This is a comment here in the notes of what they had written. So just I feel like this person is stuck up. way back when because that is not always the norm these days. Now, if I were to go out on a first date with somebody and I would offer to pay and if they said no, I would politely put my wallet back in my purse and that would be that but i would mm -hmm. always offer and i think that's pretty typical these days of women mm. is to offer to pay most women not every woman offers to pay i, I will not put that every out woman there. i know however that's not what we're talking about right now we're right, talking right. about a dude Agreed. that is dating 35 different fucking women specifically for the birthday presents he made a plan and he executed the plan to get he... birthday presents he actually he, like, told them what he wanted to. He, he probably told them, listen, I'd like this. I'd like that. I'd like the You know, next my birthday's thing. coming up, and I'd really like a Rolex. <laughs> have you have you ever heard of Rolex? They're nice. They're, they're nice Rolex. watches. Oh, this is a nice cool. watch. Oh, my gosh. Very nice. Somebody got me a Rolex. I would super marry them. Just, <laughs> just saying. 
Yes, <laughs> it would look so nice on my manicured hands uh, to have, and and this ring that is attached to my wrist with the Rolex, and it's, everything is nicely manicured, and a massage, a massage with with uh, rose petals. I, oh my so goodness! So bizarre the lengths that people go to. I mean, he did defraud them. Let's be he fair here. He defrauded them by dating thirty five of them at one time without That's telling nutty. them that he has That's been nutty. dating 35 women at one time <laughs> i don't know how he kept them all straight that in itself to me is impressive it would be more impressive if he didn't get caught but oh shocker he did talk about defrauding what about that dude you were telling me about who uh was involved in some kind of insurance claim i love people so much our last episode, <laughs> when we talked about the stupidity of people, like the guy that paid his neighbor to get his wife pregnant, and then that uh -huh. shit didn't happen. Right. Something similar, kind of. This guy paid his friend to cut off his feet so that he could make an insurance claim. Oh, my God. To cut oh. off his feet, Brim, so that this he could is... make an insurance yeah. claim. Yeah, yeah. This this is very similar to another thing that I actually did. Uh, I covered this with with Alex in one of the other shows, and I don't remember. It's it's a different person because this one, the other one, was the whole leg from the knee down. Oh they cut. God. They they amputated his leg, and what he called. So this is the feet. You say. Yeah, this was the feat. He Okay, so he staged the incident. The thought was he was going to commit insurance fraud. So he has his friend cut off his feet or what? Yeah, from his feet, I believe. Have his legs, oh, have his legs amputated in a staged accident since he no longer had any use for them. Whatever. So his friend <laughs> takes a hatchet, severs his legs, and... Whenever the police come to investigate, they're like, okay. this is not at all what this accident would look like. This is very inconsistent with what it would look like. I don't know what a brush hog is, but this is what the accident, he was supposed to be under a brush hog, whatever that is, in farming. Um, but the wounds didn't match. They were too clean. It was very not consistent with what that would have been. And because he hadn't yet filed the claim to insurance, they couldn't actually charge him with it because he didn't commit insurance fraud yet. He didn't have time to before they found out that that's what his scheme was. Unreal. So it it the thing that I had known about, this was actually in March, and it was two Taiwanese men. I was wrong. It wasn't Brazil. It's two Taiwanese men, and they, what do you call it, uh, they're facing the criminal charges. One of them allegedly urged the other to purposefully freeze his legs to the point of requiring amputations, um, which was a botched attempt to collect a $1.3 million insurance payout. And so it was this because... has happened at least twice in the world, because this oh. guy's from Missouri, and those people are from Taiwan. That is crazy. The lengths that people go to for an insurance payout. Here's the thing. So the guy who convinced this dude, it was two students, he convinced this dude to cut his own leg, his leg, not, not the, because he owed money to a bookie, but he got, he said, you cut your legs off and I'll cut you in on this rather than cutting your own legs off. Go cut your own legs off. You know, like, how are you going to cut someone else's legs off to try to do that? I am so fearful of pain. That like I don't care how much money you are offering me. I am not cutting my own legs off, like at will. No, for fucking someone thank else, you. especially for someone else. It no, wasn't even thank for him. you. Like, why are you that dumb? Unreal. Like a vault. That's bad. People <laughs> really, really are that dumb, and we can see this because we see the stories every damn week. We so. Do botched attempt and now he has no legs and no insurance money so stupid so stupid People, he doesn't have a leg to stand on 
<laughs> I was gonna say something, but you just took the cake. I am not gonna. I'm not gonna even try to attempt anything after that, ladies and gentlemen. That is about all the time we have with the Dirty Little Secrets Club this week. We appreciate you. We thank you. We love you so much. Thank you for tuning in every single week. Uh, what do you call it? Make sure you continue to rate, review, subscribe. We keep hitting, uh, you know, different, different. Um, higher uh uh you know uh we're spots. ranking in canada Ranks. this week i think we're at like 129 or something like that i can't remember off the top of my head but we are in the 100s in canada keep picking us up guys keep putting us out there keep sharing with your friends keep hitting us up on all the social media okay. and danny you want to let them know the one rule of the dirty little secrets club Yes, don't be stupid. No, I'm kidding. The first rule of the Dirty <laughs> Little Secrets Club is to tell everyone about the Dirty Little Secrets Club. We'll see you guys again, God willing, next week. You think we want something from you? You got another thing coming.